I stared at the screen as it stared back at me. My name is Dylan Bell, and I'm, well, just a normal kid. I was born not here, but far away. A place that's destroyed. A place that's forgotten. A place treated like taboo. Even just saying the name of the destroyed country of America will get you shunned. New World is just like that. The government tried to change it so there was nothing wrong with it, but even the Supreme Leader can't force other kids to stop. Nobody could. I lived in a small two-story house in a small town, a place forgotten throughout the vast country. Though only twenty minutes from the capital, it wasn't big enough to be recognized. Here it was a combination of death and chaos. 7.30 a.m. Dylan Bell's house in True Korea. Dylan! Be ready for school! I know. My back sat against the end of my bed as I tied my shoe, struggling in my dark room. My desk was next to me, my black laptop sitting on the wooden top next to my small golden lamp. The only light in the room was the small light gleaming through the window, but it wasn't enough to help. Every time I looked up at my laptop, it distracted me from my current task, and what I wanted to see was something I never would. Notifications, texts, messages, not even an email. My computer stayed silent. Just like me. Dylan, come on! You have five minutes! I know! I stomped down the stairs, my black backpack slung over my shoulder. My brown hat sat upon my long, messy black hair, and I wore a simple light red hoodie and dark blue sweatpants. It was a simple outfit, something to wear if you truly didn't care. To be honest, at this point, I didn't. The downstairs was small consisting of a small room in the corner with brown shag carpeting, a small TV, and an old black couch. The kitchen was small, consisting of several old moldy counters and a wooden dinner table in the middle. My mother stood next to the dinner table with a frown on her face, as usual. She was drinking a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper, but I could see she had different intentions rather than just saying bye before I left for school. Sweetie, you need to stop wearing that hat to school. It doesn't look nice. My friend wears a hat to school. Why can't I? Not to be rude, but he's a bit weird. You've never even been over to his house? No, but I've seen his dad pick him up. I don't see anything wrong with him. Hey! I ran out of the school, running towards my friend as he stepped towards the pickup line. He stopped and looked back, his bloodshot eyes peeking out from under his hat. Ugh, what is it? He looked tired, as if he'd been up all night. I don't recall any long homework assignments being assigned, though. You want to come over tomorrow? Or, or maybe I could go over to your place? His expression turned from a tired one to a nervous one. His skin was a bit pale. Um, yeah, sure. I'll come over to your place. My house is being fumigated right now. I could tell, though. He was lying. All right. See ya. Bye, Dylan. But as he approached a familiar black car, I saw a man step out. He had black hair and was wearing a brown jacket, but something was different about him. His aura. It was something to fear. Look, I don't want my son copying a kid you barely even know. The boy is nothing but trouble. Take the hat off. I threw the hat down on the table, giving my mother the death stare at the same time. The reason I wore the hat wasn't to copy him, it was to hide myself. I was shunned for being different there. Wearing that hat kept me hidden. Fine, can I go now? My mother nodded. I groaned and walked irritably out the door. She truly was a bother sometimes. But sometimes she was also right. The walk to school was long. Our family didn't own a car, and the bus didn't come this way, so I was forced to walk. Each step I took down the sidewalk felt threatening, like I was being watched. I took a look to the sides every few feet, but didn't see anything. Bushes, trees, roads, nothing abnormal. But I always felt like I was being watched, though I didn't know by who. But I saw when I approached the building. Right outside the school were a few kids sitting out front, glaring at me from across the street. I walked past them, but as I came through the front door, they followed. Get the fuck over here, you piece of shit! I ignored it, continuing to walk towards my class. One of them grabbed my arm, shoving me against the wall. None of the other students or teachers cared. They let it happen. Even ones that did show concern, they couldn't act. What do you want? You! The man punched me across the face, throwing me to the ground. I covered my stomach as kicks smashed into my back. Pain searing through my body. I took the pain. I had to. 
I was used to it anyways. Three p.m. West Ridge Academy. The sky was a depressing gray, the clouds plain white. The grass was lacking a nice shade of green, and even the breeze was a bit chilly. The large brick school sat at the end of the road, cars waiting outside to pick up kids. School was finally over, and I'd be able to go home and do whatever. At least, that was my plan at first. I walked to the front of the classroom with the other students, ready to turn in the final assignment for the day. I still don't know why we were learning math. That wouldn't help us in this world. But I didn't even realize my mistake until the paper fell into the basket. Oh, Dylan, you put your name in English. She was one of the people that knew my struggle. Unlike everyone else, she didn't shun me. But if she tried to take action, the other teachers would report her. Miss Hollis was a nice person. However, the rest of the students weren't. The sole American people in the school either kept it secret or were feared rather than bullied. I was found out in the third week of school after being caught with American money. Piece of shit. Killer! All I wanted to do was sit down and die, but I didn't get that choice. Instead, I was forced back into my seat until the bell rung. I didn't cry, didn't scream, just put my head down and hid my face in the wooden desk. But as soon as I stepped out of the classroom, my afternoon and the rest of my life changed. I came out into the hall. The floor shiny white marble and the walls a fancy spruce wood. It looked like a rich private school, but it was, in fact, a corrupt prison of despair. Hey, kid. Get over here. It was James, the guy known around the school as the dealer. Not just of drugs, but of everything. Weapons, contraband, anything, legal or illegal. As long as it went an American, he could get it for you. What do you want, James? You promised me money for the purchase you made last week. I don't have it on me. I can get it on Monday. But I made a mistake of putting my wallet in the visible side pocket of my backpack. Bullshit. I can see your wallet right there. Now give me the money, you little shit. He grabbed me by the arm and I broke away, stepping out of reach. He stopped leaning against the wall and lunged at me, attempting to grab my backpack. He gripped my strap, but I attempted to break away. He tried to take me down. Stop! I hit the floor, my bag's content spilling out. He went for my wallet, and I slapped it out of his hand, money spilling out. Before he could do anything else, I grabbed the wallet and my bag, running towards the exit. James scooped up the money I had dropped and ran towards me, attempting to take the rest. From behind a door, a voice spoke. Stop it now! The bathroom door slowly creaked open, a boy stepping out. He wore a brown jacket and blue jeans, and a brown hat covered his face. What the fuck do you want? For you to back off. Now get out of here and go back to your shithole of a home before I shove your ass into the pit Damon dug outside. What are you going to do? Oh, you have a hat. So scary. You ain't nothing but some emo loser with no friends. Weak little. Before he could finish his sentence, the boy leaped forward, grabbing James by the arm and putting him in a headlock. He then revealed a large silver knife from his sleeve, pointing it towards his neck. Back off! He broke away from James and stepped backwards, letting him go. James scoffed and walked off, half of my money currently still in his pocket. The boy then turned to me, picking up a dropped folder from my bag and handing it back to me. Take anything? Just a bit of cash. Nothing much. Hey, I know how much your family is pressed for money. I'll get it back after school, okay? Thank you. Really. No problem. I have a lot of sins to make up for. He walked off, leaving me alone. I didn't know what sins he had, but what he even meant. All I knew was that I would find out. Eventually. 4 p.m. Shopping District. Half of my money was gone, and my mom still expected dinner on the table tonight. Of course, we still had the usual frozen stuff, but tonight she gave me her savings and told me to go get something good. I didn't have enough for the really good stuff, but I did have enough for a meal that was at least a decent quality for us. But something specific caught my eye. The market had many things to offer. Stands of food, large stores with furniture, and other goods. Lots of the people there knew my family's struggles, and the ones that didn't deny us business because of our differences tried to help us out as much as they could. I strolled down the street, staring out into the road as cars drove past. I stopped for a second, staring down at the wads of money in my hand. I then looked back up at the road, at the cars speeding past, and for a second, I considered something dark. I could end it all. Right here. And right now. I took a single step forward towards the road, but as soon as my foot hit the dark pavement, a voice came from behind. Excuse me, are you looking for somewhere, sir?
I turned around to see a man behind me, looking at me with interest. He had pale skin and thick glasses, wearing a dark suit and black pants. A simple red tie pulled off the sophisticated look, and it was nice to see someone who actually spoke English for once. Um, yeah, just, uh, buying groceries for my family. I stepped away from the road, facing the man nervously. Oh, okay then. I thought you were looking a little lost. Well, I am wondering where the Stuff Mart is. I haven't been downtown in a while. Around the corner, past the game store, and between the dress shop and cafe. I smiled and nodded thank you to him before walking off down the street. A small smile was left on my face, and the dark thoughts I had before left my mind. As I passed the Stuff Mart, I saw a shining sparkle from the store across the street. It was the gaming store, and as I approached it, the sparkle came into view. It was a black and blue visor sitting in the window display, a small case sitting next to it. The glass on the visor was blue, and the plastic full black, a golden emblem sitting on the top. On the bottom was the name of the product, written in gold. Next to that sat a game case, a large metal dragon drawn on the cover. Dragon My Online? Ah, I see you're interested. I turned my head, seeing the same man eyeing the window. I was a bit confused now he had gotten here, since I didn't think I had been followed, but I continued the conversation. Yeah, what is this Dragon Light Online? It's a VR MMORPG. Have you played an online game before? Uh, no. What is it? A multi-massive online role-playing game. A world full of weapons, quests, bosses, and anything your heart can desire. It appeals to people of different genres by having two different worlds, sci-fi and fantasy. At the moment, it's on special with a VR headset, the 5 Vision. I looked through the window and saw it. The console. It stood right on the shelf, the price staring into my eyes. I could afford it, but I wouldn't be able to get the food my mother expected me to get. Most likely she would scold me and ground me for a week before attempting to find out where I bought this so she could return it. But I probably had enough left over for the usual cheap quality food we had, and to be honest, I enjoyed the smiley face fries and dinosaur chicken nuggets. I finally made my decision. I'll take it. Six PM, Dylan Bell's house. I arrived home several hours later after devising a plan. I got the usual food we got. It was cheap but filling, and instead of taking it into the same package, I put it into the package of the five-star quality food. Hopefully that would fool my mother. My mother opened the door as I knocked, looking at me with a dirty look on her face. Where have you been? It's been three hours since school got out and you haven't even texted me! She said angrily. Sorry, there's a delay in getting the food. Sochin was working today. Sochin was the guy who worked at the Stuff Mart on certain days and was basically the most racist person you'd ever meet. I handed her the plastic bag and she took it, walking back inside. I followed her as she began to take everything out of the bags, placing them on the counter. Were you with the boy? Who? Your friend. The one with the hat. There's nothing wrong with him. Just because he wears a hat doesn't mean anything. You were with that scum. I want you to stop talking to him. He will just lead you down a path of destruction. Doesn't matter if I was hanging out with him or not. He's my friend. I don't trust that boy. He is nothing but a troublemaker who does nothing but- Mother! My mother and I looked to the side to see a girl walk out of her room. Another girl right behind her. My sister, Chloe. She wore her school uniform. A black skirt with a white sweater vest. Her skin was a bit pale, and her eyes were basic brown like mine, her deep blonde hair coming down just below her shoulders. Her school emblem was stitched to the shirt, though her hair covered it. Behind her was her best friend Naomi, who looked fairly similar. She had shoulder-length brown hair, though in a slightly messier style than my high-class sister. She was wearing the same school uniform, except she had a pale yellow vest instead of a white one. Mother, can you stop for just a day? There's nothing wrong with him. I've met him... And at the most, he's simply just secretive. He doesn't have to explain his life story for you to like him. <sighs> she scoffed and walked back over to the counter, continuing to unpack the food. Dinner will be ready at nine. Be down then. I nodded and walked towards the stairs, dropping my backpack next to the door and picking my hat off the coat rack. But as I slipped it on, I noticed Chloe and Naomi were following. They followed me into my room and I quickly closed the door behind them. What do you want? I didn't need them here now. You lied. When she spoke, it stopped my path to the window. 
I turned around to face them, noticing a smirk on Chloe's face. My expression told the truth. How do you know? Because I was talking to him a few minutes ago. He's been home since school let out. She pulled out her phone. She talked to him. But I never saw him talking to her at school. Were they talking in secret? Now, tell me why you were late. Or I may just show mom your little artwork. She pointed to my desk to give Naomi her cue. Naomi walked over to my bottom drawer, and before I could stop her, she swung it open. Sitting in the mostly empty drawer were several printed pictures, each showing very explicit art. Really, Dylan? Hun I pushed my palm over her mouth to stop her, giving them both the death stare. Shut up. I get bored. And the artist is good. And besides, it's not like you don't do the same thing. I am too busy with school to do such things like that. Right, Naomi? Naomi slowly backed into the corner, trying to stay unnoticed. We both looked at her and she glared at us, most likely thinking of a distraction. But by the tint of red running across her cheeks, we both knew what she was thinking. Well, um, tell us why you were late. No reason. Now can you go? Not until you tell us why you were late, said Chloe as she balled her fists. I stopped and took a deep breath. Hopefully she wouldn't tell Mom, though anything could happen. But at this point, I had to show her. Slowly, I approached the glass window next to my desk. I pulled open the blinds, revealing a cardboard box sitting on the windowsill. I unlocked and slid open the window, grabbing the box and pulling it inside. Chloe and Naomi watched in awe as I dropped it on the bed, the box's contents trapped inside with thick, clear tape. What did you buy? Naomi quickly rushed forward, but I stopped her, attempting to rip off the tape. Chloe watched as I struggled to open the box and walked over to the desk. She handed me my butterfly knife, which I quickly stabbed into the space between the tape and the box flap, cutting through it cleanly. I opened the box to reveal a white visor encased in styrofoam. Right under that was a game case, the words Dragon Light Online written in gold above the silver dragon. You bought the five vision? Uh, maybe. Naomi grabbed the visor from the box, looking it over a few times. She stared through the blue glass, admiring the invention. I snatched it from her and walked over to the laptop. I'm going to set this up so you can go now. I gave Chloe a thumbs up and she left the room, Naomi following her. I then turned the laptop Dinner. on, which was installing the 5 Vision software. After several minutes, it was done. The information loaded onto the device. The game was installed. I was ready. Slowly, I laid down on my bed, feeling decently comfortable. I then grasped the device and slowly lowered it down onto my face. I adjusted the small screw on the side to fit my face, staring through the blue glass. But I couldn't bring myself to press the enter button. Was I scared? New experience. A new world. I shouldn't be scared because of this place. It was a place where I could be myself. A place where I couldn't be shunned. Take me in. I pressed my finger down on the enter button, the ceiling of my room disappearing and being replaced by... nothing. I could feel myself blacking out going away. Everything turned white, and there I saw it. Large text floating in the light. Welcome, new player. Would you like to enter Dragonlight Online? I was here. My new home.